back to YGSF TV. We are in Brooklyn and I am sat here with the amazing Larissa, who is a mental health advocate and young entrepreneur and founder of Half the Story. Hello. Hello, thank you so much for having thank me. You. Well, I guess you're at my house, but I'm yeah. so thrilled to be on the show. <laughs> thank you for having me. <laughs> and thank you for having you. Thanks so, for having me. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for having us. I want to get right into it and I want you to tell me about Half the Story. Half the Story is a global nonprofit media platform that encourages authentic storytelling on social media, specifically around mental health. I really started it out of my college dorm room as we become a nonprofit and raise more money is to actually build a scalable education program and actually create a place where people can be directed to resources in their community because one of the biggest issues in mental health right now is that mental health access is very expensive. Why do you think it's so important for people to do that. The first step to mental health is actually admitting and understanding what you're going through. With the rise of social media, we wanted to create a place where people could go and actually see real people telling their real stories. The rates of anxiety and depression have skyrocketed and a lot of that is correlated to social media and technology usage. Do you think that Instagram specifically is a positive or a negative thing? I think Instagram is a positive thing. Instagram is the reason why I've had opportunities in my career. It's the reason I was able to meet friends when I moved to the new cities alone. However, it can be negative as well. The more time I spend on Instagram, the more negatively I do feel about myself. Sometimes when I'm on social media, it's when I'm alone or when I'm kind of reclusing. The less I'm on social media, the more I'm actually doing in real life. So it, it's kind yeah. of this this interesting dance. I know you said it started in your college dorm room, but mm. what was the whole process? What is the other half of the story? Exactly. <laughs> but I wanted to work in the fashion industry. And when I was 18 and I went to Vanderbilt, I started a fashion blog, which was called Living Like Lars. Basically, I became a journalist when I was in college and I would come to New York Fashion Week and write for different publications. I had a mental breakdown at Fashion Week. I was running from Betsy Johnson's last show to cover DVF. It was like 100 degrees out. I was in this like cute double denim outfit and I face planted, cracked my phone, and like ran into AOL, like was bleeding oh to sit front God. row at the show. And, and I thought, you know, there's a completely other side to the story. What people don't see is I haven't eaten in like two days. I've been trying to party every night. When I came back, I decided that enough was enough and that I needed to change the way that stories were told on social media because I wasn't the only one struggling. It was peers in the industry. Yeah. So I came back, basically stopped blogging, drew the half the story logo on a piece of paper yeah. and had my friend make it and started telling my story and yeah. encouraging other people to talk about things beyond where they're partying or what they're doing and actually connect on a human level because when you think about it, social media is the one place where you can speak and thousands of people can hear you. It's so true. And if we're gonna speak and use our voice, we have a responsibility to use it in the right way and connect with others and make them feel like they aren't alone because yeah. social media is amazing. We wouldn't be sitting here. If, so, if it weren't for social media. And I think there is that positive benefit, but we do have to find more ways to create more human connection online, but actually translate that into real world action, change or relationships. I love that. Yeah. I like that. Obviously you mentioned how the story came from a very personal place with you. What was your journey like with mental health and what is it still like now? I didn't really know what mental health was until I was in college, mm -hmm. I think. I suffered from severe depression in high school to the point where you know there were times when I was thinking about committing suicide. Mm -hmm. I think that you know, mental health is something that can be biological, it can be circumstantial, and it can be a mixture between the two. And I think for me, having a mental health platform has allowed me to be more transparent about Absolutely. the way I'm feeling. Absolutely. Um, whether that's on social media or even if people want to have coffee with me, I'll be like, hey look, you know, I love meeting new people, but I can't do that until January for the sake of my mental yeah. health. It really just happens when I pile a lot on and I build up anxiety and stress. So I realize like how I need to create boundaries to prevent prevent this from happening, but I know it's going to be a part of my life. When you start realizing that you're going through something, one of the worst things I find with myself is when I'm like, everything's going well, but I feel sad. Yeah. And I'm like, that's when I get most scared because then I'm like, but I don't know why. Yeah. I don't know why this is happening. And then if you think a little bit about it and you, and yeah. you sort of root into it, you can sort of see where it's coming from. Over time and like as you become more familiar with it and with yourself, you become aware of what the triggers are okay. and you become aware of how you can deal with it. Totally. But it doesn't mean that it, it goes away. It's not something that ever goes away, which I think people, a lot of people that maybe haven't had experience with it don't get. Exactly. When you find yourself going into this sort of dark place, yeah. what are your techniques that you use to get yourself out of it? Yeah, so I really try to meditate like yeah. every single day, yeah. even if it's five to 10 minutes. I try to work out a couple times a week mm -hmm. and like create 
a space where I have for myself. The third thing is that I don't go on my phone most times um, an hour after I wake up so I can let my body and my brain really assimilate to my environment. Also just really paying attention to what I'm putting in my body. Anti-inflammatory diet, um, it does have a profound effect on your mental health. What are the three pieces of advice you would give to people when it comes to looking after mental health? First, knowing your triggers. The second, creating boundaries around technology and social media and understanding what you need to do to thrive. And the third thing I would say is find someone you can trust. Have an open conversation about mental health, whether you're struggling or you're not, so that you can have that person that you can confide in. With young entrepreneurs, where is the best place to start in your opinion? The best place to start mm -hmm. with is the idea. Yeah, you get the idea and you start doing it. It's all about finding one small thing that you can do every day to get you closer, whether that's sending an email, sending a DM. Mm -hmm. Doing yeah. it actually. Can. It's actually just do it. Yeah. Like there's no, there's no book, there's no recipe, you just have to wake up and go. I want you to just take me out in Williamsburg. Yeah, let's a do it. Around. I'm excited. So we're gonna go do that now. All right, see ya. Thank you so much to Larissa and half the story and thank you for watching YGSF TV.